the most iconic shots in paddle is the bandeja. It is the shot that tennis players have more difficulty doing because it doesn't exist in tennis. But the bandeja has evolved over the years along with paddle. This evolution has created a more aggressive way of hitting the bandeja and that is the víbora. However, some players don't usually do the víbora and they prefer to do a flatter bandeja like Maxi Sanchez or Bella. But no worries because many other players do the víbora. Seba Nerone was one of the first players to do the víbora. Ale Galano Stupa do a lot of víboras in every match, but there is one player who stands out above all of them, and that is Sanjo Gutiérrez. The magician of San Luis recognizes that the víbora is one of his best shots. Bandeja acá. Bandeja de bueno. <laughs> Perdón, pero acá eh, hay algo que vale de mi juego, es la, la, la víbora. Acá yo creo que voy muy arriba. Sí, sí, hay que sí, creerlo, sí, ¿eh? Sí, sí, sí. Acá voy muy arriba. 1.95. So if you want to know what are the tricks of Sancho Gutierrez to execute the perfect víbora, don't miss this video. Hello to all players, I'm Pablo and I welcome you to a new four set. For almost everyone who follows the professional tour of Padel, Sancho Gutierrez is one of the players with more magic. So you want to get some magic of Sancho, don't forget to subscribe. So let's analyze the víbora step by step from the preparation to the shot and the finish. So let's start with the preparation. On the first step, you have to combine several movements. The first of all is the turn of the body and the movement with side steps. Sanjo immediately sees the opponent's lob and moves sideways on the court. The second important move has to do with his arm. He leaves the racket behind his head and raises his left hand. The left hand is going to fix the contact point of the shot with the ball. So please remember always to aim with your left hand at the ball because it helps a lot. Let's go to the second step on the preparation that is the position of the body and the feet when Sanjo decides to stop. Sanjo has his feet on the ground so he doesn't jump. Sanjo gets comfortable position himself behind the ball and doesn't need to jump as the lob is not very deep. Sanjo has his knees bent because it is necessary to avoid stiffness when positioning. This shot is a transmission of movement with all the body not just with the arm. Remember to give room between your feet and never put them together because we will fall or at least we will have less balance. And something really really important is that Sanjo weights the body on the right leg which, being right-handed like Sanjo, is the most backward leg. When does Sanjo stop? In the place where he knows he can hit the ball at the height of his head when his arm outstretched. We can still look at more details in the preparation of the shot. Sanjo uses the continental grip and he doesn't change the grip in this shot. Look at the arm and how it forms a 90 degrees angle. The movement has to be downward and forward at the same time so that the ball doesn't go in a straight line to the glass. So now Sanjo is ready for the next step, the shot. The shot starts with the shoulder movement starting with the left arm because as Sanjo is right-handed, if he doesn't move his left arm first, this shot will be blocked halfway. Imagine if Sanjo doesn't move his left arm, it would be something like this. Something stupid, right? The next step is the transfer of weight from the right foot, the most backward, to the left foot. With this, we will be able to add speed to the ball without the need to do it all with the arm since we will be transferring the weight of the body. To achieve this, we need to move, and that sometimes is not easy. Something really important in the víbora is that it is performed with the arm fully extended. To do this, let's remember again to leave the ball in front and to the right away from the body. If we were a clock, imagine that the front is the 12 o'clock. So we should leave the ball at 2 o'clock. However, the impact on the ball should be at its 3 o'clock if you are right-handed. So you have to scrap the ball on the right side to take the effect we want. And at what height that Sanjo hit the víbora? when the ball falls to the head of his head. If we hit the ball higher compared to our head, the ball will bounce a lot, and if we hit lower, we will miss straight into the net. Last step to take into account is the end of the shot. The right foot overtakes the left foot to initiate the movement to recover the net. Remember that the víbora or bandeja is a shot to avoid losing the net, even if we also try to win the point. If we have moved our shoulders and hips correctly, we will end up facing our opponents again. 
Sanjo's left hand picks up the racket again to protect himself. If you think this video has helped you to learn something new about Padel or about Sanjo's Vibra, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel because it's free. And now the question is which shot and which player would you like to see on the next video? Until then, see you and thank you.